Yo, what's up, family? Shalom, shalom. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for all the encouragement and love, family. You guys are amazing. Um, I want to, I'm in the book of Nahum, and I wanted to read to you guys too. I wanted to share what I came across in chapter one and also into chapter three. You can see in um, Nahum chapter one, verses two and three. It talks about God is jealous and the Lord avenge, the Lord avenge and he is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Nineveh, the destruction of Nineveh and the deliverance of Judah. This is what this is talking about, family. And when you put this together in today's times and you see what's going on around the world, and I'm not going to say certain things, y'all know what I'm talking about, and we'll get more into that in a, in a minute. But um, right here, you see what it says, what do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time for a while tangled like thorns and while drunken like drunkards, they shall be devoured like stubble, fully dried. From you comes forth one who plots evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Thou says the Lord, though they are safe and likewise many, yet in this manner they will be cut down. When, the, when he passes through, though I afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. For now I will break off his yoke from you and burst your bonds apart. The Lord has given a command concerning you. Your name shall be perpetuated no longer out of the house of your gods. Notice is, you know, lowercase g family. Now, if you come over, excuse me, if you come over into, I'll leave this right here for y'all. If you turn over into Nahum chapter 3, Nineveh, it, that is, is basically God's warning, family, and it's woe to the city of blood. What this is speaking about is Israel and the Assyrians. The Assyrian soldiers are shown, you know, in many depictions, family, throughout the Bible, torturing children, binding warriors, chopping off their hands, and, you know, impaling victims on stakes, beheading their enemies. Because of the cruelty and the paganism of the Assyrians, the Hebrew people, you know, basically harbored deep-seated resentment and hostility towards this nation. This attitude is revealed clearly in the book of Jonah family, and we'll get into that in a second as well. It cross-referenced into it. When God instructs the prophet to preach to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, Jonah refused and went into the opposite direction. And you can see that in Jonah 1 verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. And after he finally went to Nineveh, he was disappointed with God because he spared the city. And that's in Jonah 4, 1 through 3. So you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, if I may, almost 150 years before Nahum came into play that, you know, God had spared that city and he had took off what he, he was going to initially destroy. The entire book of Nahum is a prediction of God's judgment, though, against the Assyrians. And Nahum informed the nation that his day as a world power was drawing to a close. And in an oracle of a woe, the prophet described Nineveh as a, you know, a bloody city full of lies and robbery. Nahum 3.1 but soon the city of, um, of Nineveh would be laid to waste, and Assyria would be crumbled before the judgment of God, but basically being destroyed. This happened, as Nahum prophesied, when the Babylonians and the Medians formed a coalition to defeat the Assyrians. And this is around 612 BC. But they were very cruel people. They were very aggressive, but... Um, you can take, I'm going to take the time, fam, I'm going to read to you a little bit out of, let's turn to, let's see, there we go. This is name um, three, none of this great ungodliness. Woe to the bloody city, it is full of lies and robbery, its victims never departs. The noise of the whip and the noise of the rattling wheels of galloping horses and clattering chariots. 
horsemen charge with a bright sword and a glittering spear. There is a multitude of slain, a great number of bodies, countless corpses. They stumble over the corpses. Because of the multitude of horror trees of the seductive harlot, the mistress, mistress of sorceries, who sells nations through her horror trees and families through her sorceries. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. And you can come over into chapter, um, it's still chapter 3, verse 15. There, there the fire will devour you, the sword will cut you off. It will eat you up like a locust. Make yourself many like the locust. Make yourself many like the swarming locust. Basically, God's saying it don't matter how many you make yourself, you're going to be destroyed. Because he's, he's the almighty God. He's the creator of all things. He creates and he can destroy as well. But verse 16, you can go on and see. But, you know, what, what happens to the Assyrians family. But if you cross reference, like I said, God is patient family, but he will never be mocked. Never. You know, they experienced in Jonah the blessing of God over their nation. And you can, and just for example, uh, Jonah 3 verses 9 through 10, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger, anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they had turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So at that point, 150 years, you know, he gave that city, Nineveh, 150 years. And then eventually, you know, like I said, he's not going to be mocked. He's patient, family. He's very, very patient. See, us humans, we don't have patience. I mean, it's something we all need to work on. I know I'm working on it. But it's very apparent that when he sets his judgments, he can say, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to turn from your evil. And I think that's the state many nations are in today, that God's just trying to give, you know, people time to repent, you know, as a people, as a nation. I mean, the state of America is just not good right now, you know. And I think we've had chances. There's been things that's happened to try to wake us up, family. You know, but God will not ever be mocked, and his judgments will come to pass, and he is very patient. But you can cross-reference Nahum into Jonah. And that was Jonah 3, verses 9 through 10. And check out, take the time, family. It's, um, Nahum's, you know, it's only three chapters. So... You know, take the time to read it. Even into chapter 2, it's talking about the call to the battle. But just know that, you know, right now, if you hate Israel, then you, you basically hate the Most High God. I'm just going to say it like that. You know, why has the body of Christ lost its urgency? We desperately need to get it back, family. Exalt Christ and be bold. No man can do what God can do, family. No politician, no, no human. It, people let you down, but God will not forsake us. And if we put our trust in him, we'll get through whatever's going you know, to come, whatever we're going to face. You know, to fall for their fake peace and safety. You know, we know what happens when they claim peace and safety, family. When it is only the Most High Lord, it's only Yeshua, Jesus Christ, God, that can give us that peace and that safety, that shield. You know, you start putting your trust in, in your own works and your own thing and your own politicians and man. You start putting trust in man, woman, whatever, over God. You're going to be brought down low. And this city was gave, is it, it should be an example to all of us, family. Just pay attention to what's going on in your country and what's going on around the world, you know. It's all coming to pass. It's all coming together. But take the time to read um, Nahum 1 through 3 and also in the book of Jonah, chapter 3. I love you guys. I hope y'all are having a good week. Um, like I said, just know that all, all God really wants from us is a relationship family 
you know, not just the lip service and not just to say, well, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but to know him, to actually know him. You know, repent and believe for the kingdom of God is at hand. I love you all. Keep on looking up, okay? And be encouraged always, family. You're always going to be tested. I've always, you know, I told a friend the other day, just know you're being tested for a reason. The kingdom of God is within you. You know, the Holy Spirit's within you. You're going to be tested. If you weren't being tested and going through trials and tribulations and long-suffering, then I would say you would have more to be worried about and be concerned about. So be encouraged about whatever you're facing. I love each and every one of you. Later.